Hi, I'm Vio and Bush from Glowing Pictures. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at synchronizing audio and video in VDMX. This is something we cover extensively in our visual performance program here at DubSpot. So if you haven't already watched the previous tutorial, we really recommend you do so because we'll be picking up on a lot of the concepts that we illustrated in that tutorial. Go to the link below and download Vidvox's tutorial project and sample clip. Now I'm actually going to use clips by Beeple, which are freely available, and you can see the download below for those as well. So you should already have VDMX installed and up and running. In the Workspace Inspector, click on Plugins, then Clock One. So just like most music making software, VDMX is a clock for setting the tempo. You can use an internal clock or you can slave the clock to another application. In this case, we'll be slaving it to live. In the clock settings, set the source to MIDI slave to VDMX. Now, let's switch over to live. In the Ableton Live preferences, in the MIDI tab, under to VDMX, set the sync to on option to enable MIDI clock output. And I'm going to turn on the metronome so you can hear what we're doing here. Now we're getting our tempo directly out of live as you can hear with the metronome. Once you set the clock, all of the LFOs and sequencers lock to it. Okay, so now let's take a look at the step sequencer that's driving the playback. Clip on Step Sequencer in the Workspace Inspector, which will open the Step Sequencer controls. Here we can change the number of rows by clicking on the value in the Rows column. Let's change that to 10. We can also change the number of columns by clicking the Columns button in the Step Sequencer controls. So let's change that to 16. Now this Step Sequencer is controlling one measure of music, so each of these columns would represent one sixteenth note. And now as I draw around inside of this Step Sequencer, it's going to trigger the video at different points in the clip based upon the tempo of the music coming out of live. And so if the tempo within live were to change, the tempo of these clips would always be slave to it and would always be quantized to the music. If you want to speed up or slow down the steps, you can have less columns, or you can also do it by changing the rate of the step sequencer. So here, when you see the rate slider of the step sequencer, I'm going to put in a very precise number so that it remains quantized. I'm going to put in 0.5 in the slider inspector. And now it's triggering the clips at half speed. So in other words, each one of these 16 slices is now one eighth note. Now the step sequencer will assign its values to the time code of your clip depending on the in and out points that are set. So when I'm working with repetitive loops like this, I often find that one way to add variety is to be able to slide the endpoint so that the quantization remains locked, but that the content can change and evolve. This is also a great way to improvise if you have long clips because you can just load the long clip in, make sure it's all quantized and locked to the music, and then you can slide the endpoint around to find the part of the clip that really evokes what you're hearing in the music. So if you're improvising with music that you may not have heard before, this is a great way that you can work on the fly to really find something that really matches and have everything right at your fingertips. In order to do this, let's click on the Layer 1 Playback, which brings up the UI Inspector. We see that the playback is already receiving data from the step sequencer. This is mapped to the value. We're going to add another source to the slider, but this time map to the minimum or master endpoint of the clip. Press the plus in the UI inspector to add another source. Now change value to min by clicking on the arrows over on the right. Now this tutorial isn't really about MIDI mapping, but it's just so darn easy that I'm just going to map a single slider by clicking detect 
and sliding the slider here on the APC-40. Now, by sliding the APC-40, I can change the end point of the clip, which will affect the index of the step sequencer. So the step sequencer continues chopping my footage at the same tempo, but we can really fine tune which part of the clip it's selecting. For my live rig, I have all this stuff mapped to my MIDI controller, so I never really need to look at my laptop. I can just keep my eye on the screen and see what the audience sees. So one last way to use audio to manipulate visuals is by using data from audio analysis. In order to do this, I'm gonna play a track. It's by Chris Petty, one of my colleagues here at DubSpot. So let's fire it off. see that the video is totally synced to the audio because it's all locked in at the clock at 140. Now in the workspace inspector, click on plugins. Now click the plus and select audio analysis. Now this is going to bring up an audio analysis window. Sometimes you need to click this little recycle button in order to kick it in. So the audio analysis is now listening to my built-in microphone. I can turn up the gain here. And the audio analysis plugin can be modified just like we modified the step sequencer. But generally, this uh, three bandpass filters are all that I need. Okay, so you can see by clicking and dragging on these filters, we can modify most of their properties and isolate the frequencies that we're looking for. Now, going back to the workspace inspector, click on layers in layer one. Now you'll see the layer one effects inspector currently empty. So I want the base of this track to drive the exposure of the clip. So I'm gonna load color adjustment, exposure adjust. Now, if I right click on this input EV slider, I can use Use data source, audio analysis, filter one. So now the bass is driving my effect. Now, to fine tune this, you can either adjust the bandpass on filter one, or you can change the gain on the audio analysis to get better values. Or, if you select the filter in the audio analysis inspector, you can then adjust the smoothing. So, if I go here to plugins, audio analysis, audio analysis two. I can then Select the filter, and then I can change the smoothing here. So if I put that up, that's going to do a lot to take some of the jitteriness out. So the easiest way to do this, though, is just to limit the min and max values in the exposure effect slider so that you can get a more subtle effect. So I'm going to go back to my layers, and then I'm going to look at this slider that's bouncing up and down now from the audio. And I'm going to change the min and max. So now the bass is just very subtly changing the exposure. Now let's add another effect, hue adjust. So I'm going to attach it to filter three, the high end. Now we can limit that as well so that it's not going all over the entire spectrum and it's also just a more subtle effect. And now we have a bunch of cool parameters to play with. We can jam around with the step sequencer. 
we can adjust the audio analysis, we can adjust our filters, and uh, we have all kinds of sound triggered effects we can play with here in our rig. Okay, so that's all the time we have for today. Next time we'll get a little bit deeper into MIDI mapping and controlling using a controller surface like this APC-40. And of course we're going to get much more into detail in all of these topics here at the DubSpot Visual Performance Program. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again next time. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.